You know, I'm really good at doing things that if you're not looking at it, <laughs> it looks good. Hey, welcome back to the Outrun Garage. You saw last week that we pretty much finished up the cross member. Well, Tommy's already went through and ground it, made it all pretty. We're gonna weld it in right now, and then we are going to get started on pancaking that cross member. So, thanks for coming and watching us. Now for the ride that we try to make this look like it came from the factory. So here's what we're gonna try and do. All of these brackets that were originally put on these frames were done with buck rivets, B-U-C-K. Anyway, we're gonna try and replicate back here where we're welding and filling that up. We're gonna try and replicate a buck rivet with the weld itself. Now I've done it before, but there's no telling from one thing to the next whether it's gonna look good. So I'm gonna give you guys a close up view and let's see if it works. If it doesn't, We'll grind it down flat and make it look pretty. Close. All right. They're not 100% perfect, but I think they fake pretty well. Especially if you're not paying attention to it. You know, I'm really good at doing things that if you're not looking at it, <laughs> it looks good. Let's try another one. All right, look at that little guy making my life miserable. I think it'll fake all right. All right, in traditional fashion, we forgot to film welding it in. Oh well, we're not filmologists. We're backyard hacks. Anyway, check it out. All right, so there's our fake rivets. You see, they look pretty close. And then we did some additional welding down there just to make sure they're pink and they're solid. Fake rivets. And here are. Pretty good. <laughs> so, there it is, installed in the frame. All right, I'm going on a rant here for a second. I am tired of all this communist bull crap. You can't even get two inch tape anymore. It's 1.88 because it's 48 millimeters wide. You can't get one inch tape anymore. It is 0.94. That aggravates me to no end because one of the easy ways of doing this is you take a piece of two inch tape and that is your mark and you know exactly where you are. That being said, 1.88 is going to work. We'll describe a line and we'll cut to the outside of the line and we'll be close. It doesn't have to be exactly two inches. It has to be at least an inch and three quarters. Otherwise, the bottom of the cross member will hit before the frame hits. And we're trying to lay frame. That's what he wants to do is lay frame. So it needs to be at least an inch and three quarters. We will do this. And what we do with this is we scribe a couple lines, find out exactly how far we're going to go. We put a piece of two inch tape or 1.88. <laughs> we put us a piece of two inch tape and that gives us our marks. We cut it in the real nice and we'll be able to go through and do this. By the way, if any of you guys are communists or socialists that you're watching this, please unsubscribe from my channel. All right, so real easy like, Tommy has gone through and given us some basic ideas where the line's gonna go. You have to make sure that you cut that the baby down straight as can be because the frame is gonna end up sitting lower right here. So you have no leeway. You have to get that right or it won't move up like it needs to. Well, we're gonna make a two inch mark and this is how we're gonna do it. Inch 1.88, sorry. So we're gonna take this guy this is going to be a little cheater. And we're going to make ourselves a mark like this right here. Pretty much wherever we want. As long as you can get your two inches out of it, or your 1.88, you're going to be all right. All right, now we're not going to go that far, but I wanted to make sure we had enough going over there. So we're going to scribe this line, and we're going to be able to cut to the outside of it. You can just leave the tape on there and cut to it as it starts to get hot sometimes it burns sometimes it curls so we're using this just to set it up put another piece over here these do not have to be exactly the same i'm going to get them as close as possible though because as long as you have your distances here top to bottom the same and your points end up being the same it's not going to matter if this is a quarter inch or an eighth inch different than the other side because this piece here is going to end up being down here so it's just going to be a matter of pulling it down. 
So this is another type of square we use. And I love squares, you guys should know that by now. So I will cheat this right here by simply getting our square. We're gonna go right here so that we know we're lined up. And we are going to cut that girl. All right, we know that's lined up. Still, we're gonna cut to the outside of that after we've described it. We wanna make sure that we are overcutting this direction, if anything. You don't want it to be too short. All right, we have our piece of 1.88. Now we're gonna get ourselves just a basic idea here, and we can do this with this, but it's not gonna matter. We're gonna come out here, we're gonna come out about four inches. We'll do the same over here. We're gonna square it up. All right, so we have our starting points right here. So here's the bottom line. When you go across here, the measurement this direction, the measurement like this is not going to be two inches. It's gonna be measured two inches this way. If you measure this way, it's gonna be smaller than two inches. But everything here has to go down 1.88 inches. So that's why when we cut and we square this off, we're going to go from that point right there to our lower point down here, that point right there to our lower point down there. And we don't care what our dimension is here. All of that will transpose straight down. So we're going to get another 1.88 across here. And we'll do the same exact thing. Now on this one, it's pretty much down in the corner. And this is the hardest part of it right here. Because these don't quite line up, you end up having to do a little bit of weld and a little bit of grind. But, as you can tell, Tommy knows how to weld, Tommy knows how to grind. Sucker. <laughs> this time we're going to use our square like so. We are going to go right here. Alright, so now we can take the smaller tape. And you need two different sizes of tape because that's 1.88, this is 0.94. Because the width this way, angled there, is going to be smaller than this way. So you don't want to try and use that tape or it'll end up giving you a wrong measurement. So with all this accuracy we're trying to do, and bottom line, most of it doesn't matter because the rule of thumb is with a MIG welder, if your gap is small enough that you can step over it, you can close it up with a MIG welder. All right, so we're gonna go right from this point, right there, we're gonna go down to this point, right there. And that should be fairly straight. And we're going to go right down here. Do the same exact thing. Alright, so if you see, hopefully I'll show you here in just a second, you see there is a an overlap. Let me show you. All right, we got 1.88 inches here. As it goes, it turns and this becomes smaller. You see that overlap in there? That's an indication that that is less than 1.88, even though we have 2.94s on it. And then it comes down here and hits here to two inches again. But your measurement is taking, taken vertically, not perpendicular to that line. So that's important or you will mess it up. You will have a great big gap. All right, let's connect this. I'll quit talking so much. All right, according to all the rules of math, 
That should be fairly average when we get done. Now a lot of times if you go along with a sharpie and you're going to draw half on the metal and half on the tape, line on there it's probably just as easy to see where you're going so we colored over the top of it so if we cut to the inside of it and leave the line we will be at 1.88 which is sufficient for what we're doing So, there's our line there. So we're gonna flip it over and we'll do the next slide. All right, same song, second verse. Slicker than greased owl snot. By the way, that's pretty slick, greased owl snot. Alright, again, we're going to cut to the inside. That's what that little mark means, go to that inside. It's called a chicken track. We're going to cut across here. We're going to cut this section out. We're going to cut the other side, cut across there. We'll show you the pieces, we'll show you the process, we'll show you how it drops down. And then there are things you have to massage. But step by step, with a little bit of tape and a little bit of measurement, easy peasy. So we have 16 minutes until the end of our Friday. I have to go up to see my parents, or I don't have to, but I get to. Tommy gets to go home and see his kids and his wife. So we are trying to see if in 16 minutes we can cut this to show you guys and then next week we'll weld it up. But to you guys, it'll all be the same week. All right, he's gonna have super fun. Yeah, hello.
kids. Be careful not to slice yourself, Thomas. Sorry about the lighting. You can see the four pieces we end up with. These are the two pieces he cut out. This is our lid. This is gonna go right back on the top of this and we're gonna weld it all the way around. So basically we just took two inches out of that, shortened it. It's called pancaking. Hey, welcome back to the Outright Garage. Appreciate you guys coming back. It's another day. You've already saw half of this video, but this is another day. It's another week. Uh, things are looking really, really good. We are going to get a little bit of cleanup work done. Uh, anytime you go through and do the, the slicing and dicing that we're doing, there's something, there's always going to be a little bit of inconsistency. So now we'll go through and correct some of those measurements, get everything squared up. And uh, as you'll see here in just a minute, there are lots of places where you need to slice and dice and pie cut. Oh, I love pie. Anyway, uh, pie cut, and we'll bend and twist and hit and kick and bite and scratch. And we'll get this girl lined up and welded up and ground down so that for the most part, no one would ever be able to know if they just took a look at it. Anyway, so check this out. We're gonna get some pie. All right, guys. So here is the front end. I guess you'd call it a girdle or something like that. The lower control arms bolt here. The uppers are going right here. So actually, theoretically, this is the driver's side. Anyway, you guys uh, saw footage of the rough cut here. So now, here's our top piece. We're going to go ahead and uh, put it in place here. So it started up there, and now it's down here. What are you doing down there? Uh, like Pete was saying, here's where we're going to have to do some relief cuts and then manipulate it back to where it's a one whole, pretty much a whole straight line. Um, down here is okay. We already knew that this was going to be an issue, but it's because these angles were tapered. Anyway, um, no biggie. We do that kind of stuff here before. Anyway, um, hang on real quick. I'll show you how tight our tolerances are. All right here. And if you actually look at it profile wise, it's actually a pretty good cut. Um, we're going to have to probably grind this down a little bit. That way the whole thing kind of sits down just a little bit more. Profile wise, it's uh, pretty good in the back. We might have to uh, clean this up a little bit, this angle right here. Um, that way it sits just a little bit flatter. Uh, so what we need to do is we need to make some end caps for here. They're actually going to sit inside here. Uh, weld them up, make them nice and pretty. And then there's going to be a surface that we can weld this profile uh, to that. All right, guys. So as uh, as Pete was saying, you don't want cooked dirty pie because this stuff it tastes like dirt. So um, we're gonna go ahead and clean all this uh, all this fun out of here. All right guys, like Pete was explaining before, um, even a brain surgeon has weird cuts. Um, we gotta relieve this just a little bit. Um, I think we'll, we'll go ahead and shave this guy right here. We'll go ahead and 
fillet that just a little bit there. Um, that actually looks pretty good. I'm going to start on, this, uh, start on the bottom girdle, whatever adjustments we need to do. Um, that way I don't forget what I'm doing. You guys ever have that trouble? <laughs> Good for fit the skin. The reason why I ground in there is so I can actually visibly. All right, so let's show you a few of the inconsistencies when you're chopping two inches out of something. See that little bump out there? Well, there's nothing we could do about that, but there is something we're going to do about it now. So we cut out so much of it that what we do is we're going to end up doing our pie cuts. We're going to tap that in. We're going to cut up here on top also and flare that out a little bit so it gives a nice consistent line. You see here there's a second one. We're going to do the same exact thing there. This we ground down our lip and we're going to end up filling that all with weld and then grinding it down to make it look good. we got the same thing over here. Let me flip this around and we'll show you a few more. Of the... Before I do that, you can see now that we have a much more consistent line down across there because just a little bit of cutting and grinding so let me show you the other side so this is the front side of the cross member and this is where the majority of the work has to be done you'll notice here we got a big gap there and a huge long gap there and it's the same on the other side so same exact thing we're going to pie cut tip in pie cut down here tip out same thing we're going to bump that in we're going to bump the top out we're going to get those where they're lined up. We'll buzz it up. We'll grind it up. And she'll be perfect. Now let me show you a little trick for those of you who are doing something like this. It's very difficult to grab this and try and get it in and out. But Tommy does this thing that's actually very smart. You just put a loose bolt in there and then you can grab it. You can pick everything up. He is super smart. <laughs> yeah, I tell you, you forget they're in there and you weld it up. Wah, wah. So here's our relief cuts in the bottom part of the girdle. We're gonna have to finesse these. Uh, but what I wanted to show you is now, um, I'm gonna start on these inner panels here. They're actually, the profile is actually to where it's flush here. Anyway, so here's what we got. This is the back part, front part. And theoretically, you can actually take your measurements out here and then um, subtract eighth of an inch all the way around. Um, which is usually a pretty good starting point. Yeah, so we'll go ahead and cut this out. We'll bang these around. And we're, if you look at, um, I kind of split the difference as to where they need to go. That way we can uh, do these relief cuts and start coming back towards it. That way you're not, you don't have some weird kind of step or something like that going on. All righty guys, we're back at it. We got sidetracked for a while. I had to paint some panels on my wife's car, new car, new used car that was wrecked, blah, 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 long story. Anyway, we've been sidetracked. We've been avoiding uh, county inspectors. We've been having all kinds of fun. But we are ready. Tommy's been messing with this thing, cutting, tapping, hitting, kicking, biting, scratching, and screaming. We're ready to get this thing welded up. Check it out. It's been sliced, hit, bent. It's all ready to roll. Let's get her welded up. So we didn't show you the second side welding because it's all the same thing and a little boring, but we got our welded in. We're going to get ready to weld in that piece right there. All right, we got it lined up pretty well. We're going to do a couple little tacks, check all of our alignments again. Right, go from there. getting this girl all tightened up, welded up. And we'll get some grinding done and we will have ourselves a pancake C10 cross member.
It is really hot out here. Dripping sweat. But you know what? It's all welded up. We're going to let this girl cool down for about an hour. We're going to put a grinding wheel on it and a blappy disc. We'll get this girl all finished up today. So Pete went ahead and finished uh, welding the girdle. And uh, me personally, it looks like Frankenstein. Looks really good. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna start cleaning it up. And uh, like you said, we'll probably find some pinholes, but uh, Pete can weld pretty good. So I don't know, we'll find out. All right guys, so we're gonna, we're gonna get the highs and lows taken care of. Then uh, we'll see what we got. We'll paddle wheel it, make it all nice and pretty. And uh, yeah, it'll be awesome. Be awesome. All right, so that is the pass with the flappy disc. Now you see we have some imperfections in it. We'll go back and weld that up, or we will go through and hit that with the epoxy and make it look pretty. Let's do it. All right, there is the almost finished product. All the metal work's been done. We'll put some epoxy, some two-part epoxy on it, fill up a few of the divots. We don't want to continue to put heat on it because a lot of times you just make another divot. So. Once again, you made it through another one of our videos. We appreciate it. We thank you guys for coming out and taking a look at what we do. Pancakes for breakfast. Hey. That's what we had. We've had pancakes for two or three days. <laughs> so hard to cheat. Yeah. So this has been pancaked an inch and three quarters is what we went. So we shortened the center section right here an inch and three quarters. This piece here used to be up here. And that will enable us to be able to lay this girl on the ground. And that is what Trey wants. And what Trey wants, Trey gets. Anyway, we really appreciate you guys coming out and checking out what we do. Remember to subscribe to the channel, give us a thumbs up, leave a comment, uh, click the bell notification. Oh, store, check out the store. www.theoddrodgarage.com. Uh, it helps us out. And you can be the coolest cat in the world wearing one of these t-shirts right here. Hey, we want to thank you guys for coming out. And as always, thanks for watching.